Hello everybody, it's good to have you all here and I hope you're all well. It's good that we can meet together, even although we can't see each other, it is still good to be able to worship God together. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. Our call to worship is from Psalm 139 verses 1 to 4. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I stand and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. Amen. <laughs> Gracious Lord, source of all goodness and love, we come before you in humble adoration of your majesty, seeking strength in your presence and showing humility in our prayer of approach. We confess that we have failed you in many ways and ask your forgiveness. You know us so well, Lord, our deeds and our failings, yet you are always there for us. Forgive our weaknesses and strengthen our faith in the hope that we will become more like you. Wonderful, loving and compassionate God, nations throughout the world are living in fear during this dreadful COVID-19 pandemic and dread what the future may hold for them. Help them, Lord, to see your light of hope shining around this beautiful world you have given us, to see the perfection of the flowers, hear the bird song at eventide, look at the stars in a midnight sky, Watch the wonder of a rising and setting sun and witness the miracle of a newborn baby and renew their hope in you, mighty God, who made us and gave us all those wonders, reminding them that this will soon pass 
and you will never leave them or forsake them. Fill our hearts with renewed passion to go forth and show your great love to others. God of compassion, give peace to your church, peace among the nations, and peace in our hearts. Help us to encourage one another in the words of your dear son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear the word of God. Our reading is from Psalm 8 in the Old Testament. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. God's word for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Psalm 8 gives us such an awesome picture of our creator God. It starts and ends with a wonderful verse. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name and all the earth. I don't know about you, but it just wants—it just makes me want to sing 
for joy and wonder at our God. In verse 3, our eyes are drawn upward to the awesome sight where God has simply used his fingers. This image conveys God's immense power and artistic at work. The psalmist goes on to consider God's creation, the infinite beauty of the moon, the constellations of the stars. Have you, been, have you ever been in some place where it is very dark, no light, a clear night with only the moon and the stars? How amazing was it? Have you ever been in some place? Sorry. On holiday, Dixon and I were often in places where there was no light other than the stars. When we were in the Maldives one night, we lay down in the sunbeds and gazed up at the stars. It was just breathtaking, the amount of stars that we could see. Then God added this to the splendour. Away in the distance, there was lightning flashing. Another time when we were cruising in a converted fishing boat around the Greek islands, we were moored on a, on a deserted island and one night uh, it was very dark and we saw the Milky Way so clearly. It was really amazing. It's good when we have time and opportunity to stop and wonder at God's creation. It's also so amazing that this same God knows us and cares for us. God is awesome. We read in Isaiah 43 verse 4, Since you are precious and honoured in my sight, and because I love you, I will give people in exchange for you. He gave us Jesus. He gave us his son who died on the cross for our sin. And in Isaiah 49 verse 16, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. How intimately God knows each of us. There are 7.8 billion people on the earth and 2.4 billion of them are Christians, the largest religious group. And about 385,000 babies are born each day. But God loves each and every one of them. The psalmist says, what is man that you are mindful of him? God alone has done the work of creation. He doesn't need man. And yet it is humankind that he is so mindful of and cares for. When you think of how vast this universe is, how small man is, it is such an honour to know that God cares for us. In Genesis 1 verse 28 we read, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the seas and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. After that blessing, we know that Adam and Eve brought sin into the world. Yet God still gave them the responsibility to look after his creation. This psalm reminds us that our supremacy in the natural world did not result from our own efforts, but from God's deliberate choice. God has given us a purpose here on earth to maintain order and to shine God's light on creation. He didn't just create the beauty of the heavens, but also the beauty of the earth. We see the glory of creation all around us at this moment with the awe-inspiring sight of the autumn colours. How good a job are we doing looking after our home here on earth? I don't think we're doing too well at the moment. But we all have a duty to try and do something that will help not only our country, but especially those in other places who are suffering from the lack of water and too much heat. I've been trying to buy things that are stored in glassware, cardboard, or tin rather than in plastic. But I'm afraid it's very hard to find uh, because it, it, it is so much is packed in plastic. But I'll keep trying. God has entrusted us with his creation. This is another 
There was some wonder about her God. Sammy makes us into praise, rejoicing in this sense of awe and wonder that we are recognised by God and given status. It may be easy to think that we have demonstration all the demon demonstration over the world. We can do what we want, but we can't. There are 7.8 billion others sharing our home planet. I think that good stewardship of its resources is necessary so that all those born today will live a happy, healthy life. Could I suggest that you read Psalm 8 for yourselves and use it as a worship time to God? Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you know each one of us as if we were just one out of all the people on earth. We thank you that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, that you have each of our names written on the palm of your hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's come before God in prayer. Let's pray. Lord of all creation, we come to you for thanks for all that you have given us, that you provide us for our every need. We know that even though you are the God who put the stars in the sky, you want a relationship with us. You want us to bring our cares and our concerns to you. So Lord, we lift to you our world. Places affected by climate change that alters their weather, causing drought or flooding making it difficult to harvest the food that they need. For those living in war-torn areas or displaced from their homes, for refugees seeking asylum in foreign lands, Lord, show us how to help. Lord, we pray for our nation. We pray for wisdom for our leaders. As the numbers of people with COVID increase, help them to make informed decisions. Lord, help us all to do our bit by adhering to the restrictions. Lord, we pray for our communities, for those who have little love in their lives, for those who are lonely or afraid, for those who are addicted or trapped, for those who grieve or mourn, for those who are anxious, especially in the current restrictions. Lord, help us to show your love to them. Lord, we pray for those we know in our own families and in our church families who need you close to them. Thinking of those who are ill, those who are in hospital or care homes and those who are bereaved. In this silence, we bring those that we know personally to you. Lord, help us to hold them close. We lift this prayer to you, praying also for ourselves. Lord, help us to live out your love. In Jesus' name, Amen.
I would like to thank Liz and Joanne and for the prayers and Alison for the Bible reading and Darian for his music. Thank you all for joining in this time of worship. Take care of yourselves and be safe. Now let's say the blessing together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and remain always. Amen. <laughs>